Uh, I noticed Ursula had a little bit of a uh, leak going on here. Looks like it's on the exhaust side, which means the valve is probably not closing all the way. And it looks like it's blowing out uh, around the gasket there. Don't know if you can see it completely. Let me get in here a little bit better. It's not major. I've already wiped some of it off with my finger. That's why it looks cleaner higher up. But that's the only thing that I can figure. So today, uh, just to be cautious more than anything, I'm going to do a quick compression check to make sure that the compression on the cylinders is good. I'm going to take a bore scope go inside and look around and just kind of see what kind of build up we got what it looks like and I'll probably adjust the valves on the left side especially depending on what I find if everything looks normal and it's just build up and loosen the valve seat now on these uh, or the tappet adjustment now on these the specification is 0.004 uh, thou, you know, four thousandths of an inch gap and I set those uh, on both sides, but if I find it's not seating completely, what I may do is bump that on up to five thousandths of an inch, tap it gap, and run some Marvel Mystery Oil through it to try and clean out any carbon buildup that I find, and just keep an eye on this, uh, see if it comes back, because uh, we shouldn't be getting that out of her. Yeah. Well, like I said, it's a little crowded in here and I gotta get my lights up. I ain't too worried about it. First thing I'm gonna do, because I am doing a compression test, not that it should be a problem, but this thing has a fuel pickup on it that is vacuum actuated. And if I disconnect that, it won't let fuel flow while I'm cranking it, which It'd be nice not to pump fuel into it while I know it can't start. And then we'll take the uh, spark plug out. I know this is just uh, fascinating work here. Right, Ben? Gotta figure out how to hold the camera too, because I'm not. I just got it up there on the stand. First thing to do is inspect the spark plug. It has a nice tan color for the most part, but I do see a little bit of carbon on there. That uh, it's a little dark. So this one's fairly tan. I don't know if you can see anything. It's a little dark uh, around there. Don't know that that's too terribly bad, but a little worse than I thought it would be in a thousand miles. I'm not sure you're even seeing that. If I can get the camera to focus. 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 Well, I don't know if that's focused or not, but that's what we got. Okay, we'll do a quick compression check. And uh, I, I took my hand covers off. They're in the way, and my food kept hitting me in the head. So we'll do the left side first. Just do a Pressure fit there, hold that in. Uh, so the first thing you do after you do a compression check is you go find your reading glasses. So you can read it now. Eyes are just getting old. Not that I need these, I just these are these are for style. Don't really need reading glasses anymore. Okay, it looks like we're just below 125. Um, considering I don't know what normal is yet, I had to go look that up. We'll call that uh, 110, let's see, 5, 10, 15, 20, okay, so it's 5. 510, 115 is the maximum I got out of the left side. I got 115 out of it. So uh, what I'll do is I'll run that again. And just to be sure, see what the maximum is here. And 115. 
So I'm going to write that down because my memory is just about as good as my eyesight anymore. You know, odds are if we have 115 over here, we're good. If we have less than 115, well, I don't know what to think about that. I don't think we'll have less. But we may have more. Put that in there. Amazingly enough, pert near 115. It's a southern technical term, pert near. Okay. 115. So we get 115 on both sides. I will look that up to make sure that's what it should be. But I have a feeling it is, since they match. If they didn't match, then I'd be concerned. So if we do have a compression leak over here on the left side, it's not bad. Um, when I say 115, the needle hit, you know, somewhere in the vicinity, just a little above, a little below, but right at 115. Okay, looking it up online, the suggestion is, is that it should be a little higher. Um, so to make sure I wasn't just getting a leak around the rubber nipple in there, I used the actual hose adapter. Sealed it. By doing it this way, I'm getting 120 on both sides, so an extra 5 PSI. Um, but they're consistent, and I'm getting 120 on both sides. I don't know what that means yet, but I'm going to look it up and see. But uh, Again, because they match and it's so consistent, uh, I have a feeling that's probably just normal. and. You know, who knows? Maybe this is off. I guess I could take the air compressor and figure out a way to test this to make sure that it's not just off, uh, which is entirely possible because when it is cranking, it surges past 125 slightly, not much, not, not enough to say 140 or something. Um, but the needle settles back to 120 when you're cranking, so it is seeing a peak around 125. Um, but registers 120 when you leave it, so um, we'll, we'll call it 120 to 125 for right now, but I uh, don't think that's going to be an issue. So it seems to run fine, and um, if it were a major problem, uh, I don't think it would be so consistent. I think we would see one pressure on one side and one on the other side. I pulled out the bore scope. Uh, this is just an inexpensive bore scope, uh, USB driven. Got off Amazon, this left side cylinder uh, actually looks pretty good. A little bit of carbon build up in there, but I can see the markings on the top of the piston. And uh, that's pretty good. Here's the cylinder wall, a little bit of scoring. Let me turn the light up a little bit there. There we go. Yeah, you see a little better. Uh, yeah, I don't see anything alarming. Uh, just the same, you know, the hash marks, that's normal for the cylinder, that's the honing. And trying to control this thing is not easy. There we go. Spin it around here. I was trying to see if I could see the other side where the exhaust is. Yeah, that's the, that's the side of the cylinder with the exhaust. I don't see anything. Yeah, no horrible carbon buildup up there. Nothing. Yeah, that almost looks like a rust line, but it's probably a sealant of some kind. If you haven't figured it out by now, uh, I'm not a professional mechanic. I'm a, a do-it-yourselfer. Most of the tools. I do have to research, uh, especially on this bike. Uh, I mean, if you put me in a 7.3 liter diesel, uh, I've got an F350. I just I know a lot about it because I've worked on it, and you know you retain, retain the knowledge and you use it to do what you need to do. But uh, this Euro motorcycle is a completely different animal, and I am learning uh, what's normal and what's not normal. But uh, really, it's just fascinating to me. I love to take a bore scope and look around where otherwise you can't see. And I have a mirror 
uh, a little mirror attachment that goes on the end that should let me look mostly backwards and see the cylinders, but I can't seem to find it. I'm going to go look for it in a minute. My son was using it on a rifle, and uh, I think he put the mirrors on his smithing desk somewhere, gunsmith bench, and I, I don't know where they're at. But uh, there are some mirrors that come with it so that I can look backwards and see the uh, cylinder, uh, not cylinder, the, uh, I'll get it right in a minute. Yeah, the valve. <laughs> the valve itself. Yeah, I would be curious to see that. But that's the left side there. You can see coming out. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. I like this. Going to the right cylinder and see what we can see here. Okay, so. This is the right hand cylinder. This is my first look. A little bit of part in there, but uh, that's curious. I don't know what that is. Hmm. Yeah, again. If you have an idea of what that is, uh, leave a comment let me know. Looks like this carbon buildup flaking off, exposing what's underneath, but why it's yellow? I don't know. It's curious, looks like a little rust there. This one, uh, this cylinder doesn't look as clean to me as the other side did. Let's see if I can mess around and see. Yeah, it's just a reflection on the side. Mm, kind of peculiar, but they're yellow. Unless the cylinder is made out of gold, and this is how they were smuggling gold out of Russia when they sent the bike out. And it somehow got lost, and I now have a bike worth several hundred thousand dollars because of the gold content in it. Yeah, I like that's going to happen. Um, <laughs> besides, the uh, gold's a little soft to make a cylinder out of a piston. Well, the little uh, mirror thingy is more of a joke than anything. It's besides it not working well, it's foggy. Um, I mean, it looks clear here, but on the screen, it's just you—you you can't see anything with that. It's, so that's not really a disappointment. It's just what it is. The bore scope works great. It's got a good light on it. It does get very hot when the light's on. I uh, would not recommend sticking it in a fuel tank. Okay. Well, I decided uh, at this point I've checked the compression. Looks good. I've checked inside more out of curiosity with the bore scope. Looks good. Uh, I'm going to pull this valve cover off. I'm going to check the gasket. I'm going to check uh, the inside condition. I'm going to recheck the uh, gap on the tappet here. And I'm going to clean this up, and cleaning this up will put it back uh, to a known state so that I can keep an eye on it for continued, um, what size did I get? I got the wrong size. <laughs> yeah, well, okay, I got the right size here. You can't tell the difference between a 12 and a 13. This is a 12 millimeter. I pulled a 13 thinking it was a 12. Yeah, I can see it there now. Eyes are getting worse. Um, finding they're really having more trouble than I probably ought to have. Probably go to an eye doctor and see what's going on here at some point. I, mean, I know I should wear reading glasses, but it's getting bad. 
Now, there should be a little bit of oil that's going to come out. If there's a lot of oil that comes out, then we've got a real problem. Uh, but a little bit is normal. And the gasket's going to want to hang on. There we go. Yeah, not bad. I'd say it's about normal, what it was last time. And I've noticed uh, several pictures. This gasket, uh, this does nothing. It just keeps the gasket centered when you put it on. And the old ones, they tend to break and come off, and this one has. It was intact when I put this uh, back on on one side. Um, but the other side hadn't broken. Now the other side broke. I'll just leave it. Probably better replace that one day. And uh, access to the lifters here. You can see, I'm going to move it to top dead center here in just a moment so that I can check the gap again. And uh, you know, I don't see any bad carbon. Yeah, what's a little confusing here is I don't see any carbon here. So if it's coming out, blowing by, it's not blowing out of here. Which uh, leads me to wonder where it is coming from. So I don't see any leak here. I suppose there could be a slight exhaust leak there. I'm not seeing. Um, yeah, my glasses look close. And actually, that would probably make me feel better because then I would know it's not the valve, but it is just simply coming here. I kind of dismissed that because I didn't see it um, up here on the header. I didn't see any evidence of it blowing out of the past the gasket, but if it is, it would be blowing right onto here, which would definitely cause that. So, you know, anytime you see oil you don't expect or build up like this you don't expect. You need to investigate it, especially on a bike like this, that's uh, this design. Investigate it, figure out where it's coming from and take care of it. Uh, maybe I just simply need to take this off and put a new gasket on the exhaust side and that'll take care of it. But while I'm here, I am going to check everything. I'll double check my clearances here to make sure that they're still good. I don't anticipate having to adjust them, but uh, do what you got to do. And this is part of the, the charm of the bike. Yeah, if you're considering getting a Ural, realize this is kind of part of it. Uh, it's Maintenance is uh, pretty low. Every 2,500 kilometers, you got to do maintenance. you got to adjust valves. So, you know, there's a lot that you need to do that on a, you know, modern bike uh, wouldn't do wouldn't necessarily have to do, but uh, if you're a tinkerer and you like to spend time, which is what I'm doing, that's why I'm making the videos. And these are going to be kind of longer, rambling videos, short videos. These are videos I want to make. You don't have to watch them at any time. You can just click stop and move on to the next one. I'm not uh, forcing you to. But if you're like me, you might find them interesting and just want to watch. And, uh, so let's go in here and see what our valves are set up. First, I want to get it to top dead center. It should be in neutral. Still in neutral. Uh, in reverse, but we're in neutral now. And you know, both of these spin freely, which is what you want. You want all the, the pressure off of these push rods. So. I'm not even going to look at the top dead center mark yet. I'm just going to, I mean, there's no pressure on them, so that's that's got to be where it needs to be. They're both spinning. I uh, checked the valve clearances. They seem fine. This is a four thousandths shim, uh, both intake and exhaust. This is intake. That's exhaust. Um, it's fine. It, it, it's a little snug and rubs. The three thousandths um, feels like it's not even touching, and I didn't try the five thousandths, but the five thousandths really shouldn't fit. You know, I should not be able to get the five to fit, or if I do, it should really have to, to push in there. Yeah, that, that's tight. If I push to increase the clearance, yeah, I can get it in there. 
that tightens it right up. So yeah, it's, it, there's not too much. Yeah, this intake's actually a little, little tighter on the five than the exhaust, which is fine. I want to make sure that uh, they're closing all the way. So what happens if they're too tight, then you're holding the valve open on the compression stroke and you don't want that to happen. And the, and the fact that I'm getting consistent 120, 125 uh, PSI compression on both cylinders tells me this is probably not the issue. So I'm going to put all this back together and clean this up over here and um, probably order me a set of exhaust gaskets and replace them just for good measure and check them because obviously I've got some kind of an exhaust leak going here and uh, you know just keep maintenancing the bike that's all there is to it is keep maintenancing it and uh, you know next oil change I'll do the oil change video that you know, and, and one thing I did learn when you're working on it, uh, this, this compression, or not compression, this vacuum pickup, uh, when it detects a vacuum and opens, allows fuel flow. Make sure you put this back, or you'll, you'll make it just about the distance down my driveway, is about how much fuel you have in the bowls. And uh, got a fairly long driveway, but you'll make it just about out my driveway when your fuel runs out if you don't reconnect this. I cleaned that up. The little engine guard is kind of blocking some of it. I cleaned it up uh, so I can see. It does look like it was a, a, a jet of exhaust, if you will, like a, a like it was deposited on there, blowing from this way, from there. Uh, I did check. These are 13 millimeter here, so I, I have already done it, but uh, both of them actually turn just a little bit. I would say I gave each one of them uh, maybe a sixteenth of a turn it was fairly easy and they snugged up so maybe that was the issue um, if it's a little loose under heavy acceleration or whatever we might get a little um, exhaust coming out there minor exhaust leak but we'll see uh, I'm gonna ride it and see if that deposit comes back uh, I got the valve cover back on and uh, you know it's good I'm going to check my exhaust uh, head bolts over on the other side just for good measure while I'm here. Uh, again, you don't want to over torque them, you don't want to put too much pressure on them, but these moved fairly easily. Uh, it surprised me. I expected them to be uh, pretty taut and not moving, but they actually did move a little bit, so maybe that was the whole problem. But I don't mind, you know, spending some time while the weather's bad outside and it's kind of sort of raining, drizzling. Uh, coming in here and spending some time with Ursula and just making sure she's right. That's kind of the whole point of the exercise here. If you don't enjoy it, then find something else to do.